Good morning, all. It's the Devious Monkey here. It is Wednesday, approximately 10 a.m. I am going to the closer three ships to get us breakfast because she wants one of their Becky sandwiches, which is bacon, egg, and cheese on one of their, uh, it's not a muffin, biscuit. So yeah, I'm going to get that. I did come into the Forerunner to find the fall cam suction cup on the floor as far away from me as possible. So that was a bitch to reach over and get. However, comma, the monkey is still there. So here's what I've learned. That fix that I saw about like heating it up and making the suction cup flat works. And the monkey's up there. I, like I said before, if I, when I put the monkey up there after I got the new windshield, it fell after like 30 seconds every time to the point where I just haven't had it up there. It's just been sitting in here doing that little fix and cleaning everything and putting that little layer of like coconut oil uh, that did the trick. The monkey's up there. Now, I watched several videos last night on the fall camp suction cups. Mostly they were the smaller ones though. Basically what one person said stuck out to me and that was, yeah, you put it up there, you put the suction on, and they say it's good for about three or four hours, and then you just have to pump it up again. So I'm going to have to realize that that thing's going to be on the on the floor every time I come in in the morning overnight if I'm not there every three hours to pump it up. <laughs> yeah, because we all know that that's not going to happen. So, ugh, I, you know, I guess I'm just going to have to live with that. I don't know why, since apparently you have to pump it every three to four hours, I never had to do that before. As I'm not making this up, I'm not embellishing on the accomplishment or anything, but I'm telling you, when I put that thing up there that one time, it did not come down. I never had to repump it. I never had to do anything to it. It just stayed up there. And I would have to pr like pry it to get it to come off. So, don't know. So that's the end of that. I'm not gonna complain about it anymore. I am, however, going to change this little setup here on the da like on the actual dashboard, that little Frankenstein thing I made with the cheese plate and then the F22 uh, like quick release thingamajigger. That's just too high. I don't like that it sits up so high, especially if I'm putting on the X3, which also is very high. Or if I put on the one inch sensor one, which is also, you know, I mean, it's, it's like really tall. So I'll have to, oof, man, there's a skunk somewhere. So I'm going to have to change that out. I'll just have to uh, get another one of those uh, small cam, like the whole unit that has the quick release mechanism plus a plate because they're, they're teeny. And I've used those on, on so many things that I've, I've run out <laughs> and I bought a lot of them. So, but uh, you know me, I have a lot of gear, so I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to get something else. Otherwise I have at least sunglasses coming today. And I think that there, there was one other thing and I don't remember what it is because I, again, I ordered so many little things that, and they're coming in over the next several weeks. <laughs> I can't keep track of it all. Right now I have my contacts in. So I do have boxes. I mean like boxes of daily disposable progressive lens contacts. And I thought to myself yesterday, you know, when I put those contacts in that she had me try, Yes, they were comfortable, but I still couldn't see shit because my eyes were, you know, like they weren't adjusting and everything. And she said it takes two weeks. So I don't know that I have ever worn these contacts for two weeks. If it takes the body that long to get used to them, I've never given them the opportunity to do that. So I thought to myself, you know what? Screw it. I have a couple of weeks before the appointment. Well, let me just wear these for the next couple of weeks and see how I do. And you never know, they might, I mean, like right now, they're perfectly fine. They feel fine. Uh, so I m might actually end up not having to spend any money on contacts, at least not at first. But I mean, I still have to go to her because she's the eye doctor. So I have to get my eyes, you know, I have to get my, my yearly exam. So it's not like I'm wasting money or, or my insurance by going there. And then I'll have the ability to either buy new contacts or get other glasses. I mean, maybe sunglasses again, who knows? Not that I need any, because I just bought two pair and I'm looking at another pair on clocks and colors because they're having a massive year end sale and it's a clearance item. So regardless, we'll see what goes. Let's go get some food and bean. Bean and sandwiches.
gotten. I had to wait a little while though because the biscuits were in the oven being prepared. Okay, now we go home and snarf breakfast sandwiches and what's left of my coffee and do whatever it is we're gonna do today. Okay, kids, lots of excitement going on. Packages, packages, packages. So I know I got ink for the new fountain pen that I got. The gargoyles came in, I'm gonna get those. And last night, and, and I just told her about it, which she's thrilled about. When we moved here, I had to uh, get the internet hooked up like right away. So I had realized that we were gonna be rolling into town on Friday. And, and even though the weather was awful and I was like, shit, like I don't even know if we're gonna be able to make it in the amount of time that I allotted, but we've gotta be there by Saturday because that's when they're coming to install the internet. And I've gotta have that internet hooked up for my job. So in order for that to happen, I had to have a TV. So I was like, screw it. Because we, you know, we didn't bring anything with us because I didn't want to pay to move it. So I got rid of all that shit and I was like, fine. So my friend, you know, could get us onto the military bases and all that stuff. So we went to the Navy exchange and I bought a TV and she's like, why do you have to get such a big TV? Just get a little one now just so that they can hook it up and then we can go get one later. And I'm like, I'm not waiting till later and I'm not buying some small ass little 12 inch TV. I've got a good job, damn it. I'm getting a good TV. So I got this big ass TV. It's not even full HD and I've had it for eight years. Most people are shocked about the fact that I haven't had a 4K TV until I bought the 65 incher that I'm using as a background in my studio. And I, you know, I've just, I've never had it. So the Sony TV that I have in the office is a 1080. And then I got a second Sony and that's in the bedroom and that's a 1080. Now the one in the bedroom, I, like I removed the cable box from, cause I'm like, I don't need to have cable in there because all I do is watch anime and I can use the Roku for that. So I'm watching cartoons in there. And even now I don't even really watch stuff in there that much because I'm watching uh, YouTube videos on my iPad. So I don't usually watch TV in there, but regardless, I don't need like some super duper, you know, 800 K TV to watch old anime. So I, that's fine. And the 40 inch is like, okay, it could be a little bit bigger, you know, whatever. And then in the office, I don't need to have anything bigger than that 40 incher because I'm literally like, I'm so close to it. I can touch it and you know, the, any bigger than that. And it's going to look awful. So I don't worry about that. But downstairs, even though, you know, I go down every night and we usually just watch cartoons or this, that, or the other thing, there are times where we're watching something or whatever, regardless, I haven't gotten a new TV in for down there in eight years. It's a miracle that I've gone eight years and I haven't gotten a new TV at all, period, but let alone that I didn't have a 4K. So I went back and looked up, uh, you know, on Amazon where I got that Hisense 65 incher and saw what they had. That was a 2021 model. Well, I ended up getting the 2022 model. Same size, same price. Instead of it being a Roku-based TV, it's a Google-based TV. Six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. I have all that shit, so it doesn't matter. So I tried to get it on Amazon, and the delivery was like February 28th. I'm like, what the hell? And they have one at Best Buy. So I bought it last night online it's ready to be picked up. So I'm gonna go get that as well. And I didn't wear my sunglasses out and I'm like blinded because it's so bright because I'm getting my gargoyles now. So we're gonna go in and get all this shit, go get that TV and then do whatever the hell else. Let's go get some packages. Okay, so this was pretty odd. Uh, one set of gargoyles came in a bubble pouch. The other one came in a separate box that also has the ink. So we've got the... Uh, Okay, so very cool. Cyberdyne Systems Model 101. And it always bothered me that he said 101 because he's a machine and he should not make that mistake. There's a difference between a zero and a one. How big of a freaking nerd am I? <laughs> These have that, that uh, amber brownish color. And also the brown tends to uh, take out more blue light. So these got a bit of a mirror to them as well. That's kind of odd. Wasn't expecting that. So you can see how big these are. Could you imagine what the normal ones are like? Because the normal ones are even bigger. Like they would be huge on me. Okay, that's it. Gargoyles, gotten. Blood red ink, gotten. Time to go get a TV. 
All right, kids, another project down. Here you can see I got the new Hisense 50 inch 4K TV installed. Also, that's the new Apple 4K. So that's all good to go. And most importantly is I managed to get the Verizon remote to sync to the TV so that I can use this to turn the TV on and off and control the volume so I don't necessarily have to have all these remotes out there. Now, to take this older Sharp TV, which is a couple inches smaller than the TV that I just hung because that's the Hisense 50 inch, and this was a Sharp 48 inch. And for some reason I thought it was 43 inches, but I measured it the other day, uh, you know, the diagonal length is 48. I'm gonna install it on the wall here. So that way, I'll, once I get all this crap out of here, and these are all decoration stuff, Christmas decoration, we'll put that away. I will find a place for all this shit to get the hell out of the way. And then this will once again be what I intended it to be, which was a workout area. So now I can have the TV hanging up on the wall so that I can, I don't know, put some kind of exercise shit up there or even just videos, or I can just come down here and watch TV if I feel like it for some unknown reason. So that's it. That will take care of that. Then tomorrow when she's at work, I'm gonna have to go through and I'm gonna have to fix all of these. Well, not fix them. I'm gonna have to rip them off and put them all back up with, you know, the door and window sensor. Mission accomplished today. Gargoyles and a TV. Look, kids. Yes, <laughs> we're blind. Driving blind into the sun. <clears throat> Brutal. Anywho. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> oh my God. <clears throat> Maniacal screams. Yeah, it's always like brutal this time of day. Okay, blindness aside, we are going hunting. Fabric hunting. Uh, <clears throat> Nerd. Yeah, so where are we going? Michael's. Okay, wasn't sure if it was gonna do that or Joanne's or both. Try Michael's first, it's closer. <clears throat> okay, anyways, yeah, we're gonna go get fabric so she can do whatever the hell that stuff is she does. And uh, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just coming along for the ride. All right, let's go shop for fabric. Okay, kids, that was a fun day. Had a lot of adventures, even had my queen involved in some of them. So we were able to go to Michael's and she found pretty much everything that she wanted. We are actually thinking that maybe Friday we might take an extended trip to Ikea. And as I put it to her, let's see what kind of damage we can do there. Um, I still, even though there's really not a lot of space left in this room, you know, this half being studio, that half being office, I would like to change the office half in that I need to find a place to put my photo printer. So I have a big ass Canon photo printer that does up, I think up to like 13 by 19 prints. And you've seen some of those around here before, maybe if you've paid attention at all. And I want to start printing more of my stuff out, but there's no room in here for that printer. So I mean, the biggest problem is that I had that gigantic ass HP laser printer that, that's for my day job. And that takes up a huge spot where normally I would put the photo printer. Now, what I'm thinking is that even though I built this little thing down here for the cat to sit there and like just lounge and look out the window, the bottom line is, is that I want to start printing more of my shit out. And right now that printer has been relegated to a corner of the bedroom which is like the junk corner. So it's got one of my tables in there and it has a, you know, just stuff under and on top of it. Not a good place for it. So we're gonna have to work on that. I ordered the little F22 quick release mechanisms. I got two of them. I think that should be enough because one will be for that little Frankenstein thing on the dashboard of the Forerunner. And then the other one will be a spare because I can always find a use for it. I also ordered another one of these uh, TV mounts because it was so easy to put up and it's so sturdy. Obviously it's holding a 65 inch TV and I'm only putting a 48 inch TV on it. So I'm going to hang that in the garage and that's going to be part of my workout area. But for now, I think that's more than enough for today. So that's all you get. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them down below. As always, thank you for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe and remember kids, forward and up.